eggshells in the garden. I am here to save you from a lot of heartache, Geek Crew, with some heavy science facts in regards to eggshells. So, we're going to look at the anecdotal evidence why people see results and good results from eggshells, and we're going to look at the science uh, behind eggshells and whether or not it's been studied, etc. and so forth. And then, of course, I'm going to give you my opinion because I can, I guess. You don't have to stick around for that part, but you might want to if you have issues with stuff. Okay, so the reasoning for putting eggshells down, regardless of it being anecdotal or scientific, is the fact that it contains calcium. And you are 100% right, it contains calcium. There's some other nutrients in there and organic material and whatever else, but it does have that calcium component. And the idea here is that calcium is much needed in plants and calcium can be a restrictive nutrient. It's one of the 17 essential nutrients, yes, and it can cause issues. So if you've ever had, you know, blossom and rot, that is, you know, technically caused by calcium, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit more detail and the science behind why that happens in regards to it being a calcium deficiency. The second one is actually kind of that leaf tip burn. If you've ever seen that, that's another indicator of lack of calcium in the soil system or lack of calcium uptake, if you will. So calcium is kind of an interesting nutrient. I'm going to redo my 17 days of essential nutrients kind of around Christmas time for you guys, but just a little bit of a crash course here. Calcium is responsible for cell, wall, and membrane development. It is actually also responsible for physiological uh, things such as defense and against stress from biotic and abiotic factors, if you do not know. Probably one of the coolest things about calcium is it's actually a signaler, signaler, it's singles, signals, signals, it signals to the plant when other nutrients is lacking. So if there's a nutrient deficiency or improper uptake of a nutrient, regardless, separate from calcium. Calcium actually, you know, goes through the plant and signals like, hey, we got to, you know, pick it up here. We're going to stress ourselves out and die. And that is actually kind of cool, in my opinion, because I'm a nerd, because I'm a geek. Okay, so anecdotal evidence. Let's talk about that first. Okay, so anecdotal evidence is referring to what we experience outside of data. So if we experience better blooms, healthier plants, when we add eggshells, and we chalk it up to being eggshells, we can anecdotally say that the eggshells benefited my plant. Make sense? So I always encourage you guys to be your own garden scientists and try new and different things. There literally is no rules in gardening in case, in case you didn't get the memo. As influencers are really bad at trying to tell you there are rules, there aren't any. So if you chose to use uh, shells and you saw great results, then See, there's a benefit there. And that's anecdotal because we don't have access to nutrient biomass dehydrators that, that actually tell us how much nutrients is in there and et cetera and so forth. The fact that we can see healthier, bigger plants, less blossom and rot when we add eggshells, if that's the case, anecdotally, people say that that happens. I've never experienced it, but I've also never really added. I've personally never experienced it, but it, you know, that's something that people experience. I'm not going to take that away from them. The other one is actually a deterrent for slugs and snails. So the breaking up of the shells are sharp and they are sharp. The idea here is that it'll cut the slug and snails so that they don't want to go over top and into the plant. Uh, I'm just going to come out right now and say that this one's not true. Turns out uh, that it's just not sharp enough to do any damage and slugs and snails just kind of fly through it no problem so that one i think is just actually a garden myth because i'm pretty sure anyone who's tried it will anecdotally say it doesn't work because it just it doesn't so okay so let's get into the science of eggshells and what science says about them uh, and there's been no studies on eggshells in the garden the reason for that i could hazard a guess at it being the fact that you would need so much of it to be able to put into an agricultural application and all the money goes into agriculture levels of food production and therefore it's just not viable to even study or utilize as a resource and therefore 
that's why I would hazard a guess as why there isn't any heavy duty studies done on it. Now, the other reason why I actually think there's, there's no studies on it is because of what a lot of the world was made up of. So if you did not know, a lot of the world's actually made up of limestone and limestone is literally calcium, calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate when bedrock is made out of it via primary succession movement of parent material you name it that calcium gets introduced into our soil and therefore it's so abundant in the soil that it very rarely is deficient now i have a map up on the screen if i know how to do my job properly there should be a map on the screen and inside of that map you're going to notice that not everywhere is red and that fact that not everything's indicated as having calcium carbonate could mean that some spaces are low in calcium. So what do those areas do if they very obviously, geologically speaking, don't have that prevalent, but calcium is literally a secondary macro and it's very important. Well, it turns out that those folks usually just add lime. These soils that lack calcium carbonate are also usually pretty acidic. And so the combination of lime being added because lime is so inexpensive and lime is literally limestone that's been ground up into a powder, literally. So when we use limestone on an acidic soil, we tend to make calcium more bioavailable and we obviously increase the calcium content in that space. So that's usually what we're using in the areas that aren't red. So if we know that calcium can be added and, and in a garden setting where you believe you are calcium deficient, if that's what you believe based on what you're seeing, you can add lime and lime is going to be a better choice than eggshells solely because lime is much more bioavailable it's much cheaper and it also is it's a ph buffer so there's kind of added benefits there it's gonna take a lot of eggs to make a difference and eggs take a really long time to actually decompose now say you are in an area that's red and you're like wait i have a bunch of calcium what the heck is happening or you've been adding you know lots of lime to an acidic soil and you're like i have no idea what's going on Calcium is odd in how it's actually uptaken by the plant. And so the deficiencies that you're seeing actually may be from what's going on with the plant. So calcium is completely reliant on transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water through the stomata. And once the water is lost, it signals the roots to uptake more water. And inside of that water solution is calcium. Now, if you have a cooler climate, there's less water uptake and therefore less calcium uptake. If you are in an area that is drought, not a lot of water, and the plant is needing to uptake water and the water is not present and therefore the calcium is not present, you can end up with the same thing. Really high humidity can actually decrease the level of transpiration. So the opposite of it being a drought is high humidity and lots of water. And this can also restrict the uptake of calcium. And the reason for that is because if the air is humid, our rates of transpiration actually go down because there's nowhere for the water in the plant to leave through because your air actually can only hold so much humidity. So for example, if you ever looked at the humid humididex, that's an indicator as to how much of the air has water in it. And if it's at 100, there's nowhere for the plants to put it. So it ends up having to stay in the plant. And therefore, because the plant is full, it just kind of uses what it has. It's constipated, if you will. It just uses what's already in the system, uses it up, and then there's nothing left in it. But it can't take up anymore because it has a tummy ache. So when people say that they have loss of rot and they're referencing it as a watering issue, what they're trying to say is that they are suffering from poor or inefficient rates of transpiration. Either they have underwatered it, so the plant can't transpire because there's no water to transpire and take up from. It's probably wilted too at that point. And or the area is too humid and too much water and therefore we're having the opposite effect so it's actually kind of a balance and that's what we mean when we say water has been restricted what we're referencing is the ability for the plant to uptake that calcium via water and so this is when we say there should be a continual water source we kind of always just want to be tapped into the calcium because it is so important in cell membrane and cell wall development. And so long as the plant is growing, you need that ingredient present. You combine that with the fact if a plant's outside, exposed to abiotic factors, uh, biotic factors, 
you can see kind of what trajectory that heads in. Now, the other thing to consider is actually the soil pH and calcium has a very narrow level of bioavailability. And regardless if, if there's water there or not, or the rates of transpiration, if the pH isn't in the right place, we end up with the same issue, unfortunately. So one way to actually kind of change this up is through pH buffering agents that will adjust your pH accordingly. And I need to make a video on that. I know, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting Geek Crew. But this time of year is actually when people will begin to think about ways to reclaim their soil or to help their soil along. So we will see the addition of eggshells. And if there's one word of wisdom I could give you, it is to not add eggshells in any capacity to your soil because it can mean mice, it can mean voles, and it can mean birds. All three of these critters heavily enjoy the addition of eggs to their system. So please, for the love of I'm embarrassed for them. So because these animals enjoy it so much, I heavily, heavily encourage you not to add it to the soil, add it to the compost first and foremost. But if you do want to do some things for your soil in the fall, you're gonna wanna check out this video right here. And that video is what Google says to do. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.